Let's talk about ADB's method of providing timing and synchronization. Most media network transfer protocols use 1588 Precision Time Protocol, or PTP. PTP sets a common clock across all participating media devices. However, PTP allows for a few different implementations. AVB uses 802.1 AS protocol. This is a more tightly constrained profile of 1588, and I'll explain why that matters in just a minute. There are some common factors to consider with PTP, and the first is the use of a grandmaster clock. A grandmaster clock is how we set a common time between media endpoints. The selection of a grandmaster clock is a negotiated process that elects a device that is considered to have the best clock. Many things define the best clock, more than we're willing to get into in this video. But it's based on a defined process that's called the best master clock algorithm. Devices can actually be weighted to become the grandmaster. Once selected, it's the grandmaster's job to send its current time to any device that requests it. And this time is defined to a sub-second level. Here's the process in a nutshell. The grandmaster tells the network its current time with a packet called a sync packet. For example, it's currently 1247. A far-end device receives this packet, but what needs to be considered is the time that was taken for the packet to traverse the network itself. To figure out this time delay, the endpoint device sends a delay request packet to the grandmaster that includes a new timestamp. For example, I believe it to be 1247. The master receives this packet and will respond back with the actual time that the packet was received. For example, I received your packet at 1249. The end device now knows that it took one minute for the network traversal to happen, and it can account for this in its time offset. The end device and the grandmaster are now in sync. AVB takes this process further. A simple 1588 device makes this exchange from endpoint to endpoint, or what's known as an end to end exchange. A big problem with this type of exchange is it doesn't consider the network in between. Even in a network of one switch, transfer timing is not an absolute value. Excessive network traffic alone can slow down a packet exchange. Networks with multiple switches can introduce even more delay. 802.1AS establishes a peer-to-peer -peer relationship that allows a network to become involved in the time sync process. A grandmaster's closest peer is the switch that it's connected to, and the initial time exchange happens right there. After the network switch obtains its time sync from the grandmaster, it syncs with the next 802.1 capable device, whether that's an end device or another network switch. This is one of the reasons that AVB capable switches are required, but this shouldn't be viewed as a bad thing. This allows for a much faster, more precise syncing mechanism. But why does this matter to you? Time sync needs to happen. Media packets will include a timestamp to indicate the time in which the media is intended to be released. An endpoint device will hold the packet until the exact time it is scheduled to be converted. No matter the network path, the media will be released in a synchronized manner. In Biome products, this calculation is included in any inner device communication. This allows us to synchronize all of your audio and video signals from input to output. 1588 end-to-end -end exchanges simply take longer to set up. Since the network paths are not considered, an average must be taken. This averaging introduces more time for the device to actually stream media. When you plug a device into the network, you must wait for this to actually happen. Network changes can also have a drastic effect on the time it takes for a packet delivery and result in a timing offset. 1588 end-to-end -end exchanges also require the use of multicasting, and this may require special permissions to be made available when the media network switch is set up. This can result in extra work for you or your network admin. Additionally, an AVB switch can use 802.1 to detect any paths that introduce too much delay. If this is the case, the AVB switch will shut down the path's ability to carry media at all. In the next video of the series, we'll cover the topic of AVB discovery and control. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more insights, tutorials, and answers to frequently asked questions.